Time for a long overdue retest of Shell V Power. I've had a lot of viewers from the southeast email me saying they've found 2.5% ethanol in it, plus I too have noticed the ST's estimated range dropped significantly from 400 miles per tank to 340 earlier this year. So let's get right into it. Any time I put a lot of effort into a vid, I hardly get any views. Conversely, some that I've thrown together get tens of thousands. Go figure. So I've added 300 millilitres of water to 700 millilitres of the test petrol. And if you want to find out why, please check out my previous fuel test videos and help a small channel out. Or instead, leave a sarcastic or passive aggressive comment below, which thanks to some YouTube weirdness also helps the channel. As usual, we'll give this a 5 minute wait to allow any demixing phase separation to occur and settle, then we'll see if the news is true and that ethanol contaminated super unleaded has finally reached us here in the south. When So yes, it's true. I kind of expected it for a few reasons really. The separation line is just below 320 millilitres. As we started with 700 millilitres of petrol, a 2.5% ethanol blend would read 318 millilitres, which seems to be the case here. For the frequent critics of my pour through method that I debunk and never hear from again, who claim that I need to do shake up mixing, here's a 90 millilitre sample mixed with 10 millilitres of water and then shaken. I appreciate it's a little hard to see the level on camera here, but it's floating just above 12 millilitres. Remember this was 90 millilitres of petrol, so it's not 2% ethanol, as that would read just below the 12 millilitre line at 11.8 mil. 2.5% of 90 millilitres is 12.25 mil, which like my pour free method, is again the case with this. As I mentioned, I was expecting this not only from those who were kind enough to email me and the noticeable increase in fuel consumption in the Fiesta, but you might have read about the so-called prosperity deal between the US and UK back in May, which basically means we're now importing tankers of American bioethanol, much to the chagrin of the UK's two ethanol producers who will now hopefully go bust. Make no mistake, as a supporter of absolute laissez-faire capitalism, I've no sympathy at all for cronious corporations and subsidy leeches whose product is the result of government policy instead of free market demand. However, it's a pity where our UK supply couldn't keep up with the false demand created by mandate, and that at least allowed a lot of the country to get petrol without ethanol. It looks as though the American imports have increased supply, and the concern now is eventually having them at their maximum permissible 5 and 10% limits. I guess time will tell. Now that I'm using a clear cylinder over the opaque ones I started with, the foggy petrol is more evidently retaining a trace amount of water, so we can see how long the complete separation takes compared with a previous test I've done the same with, but of a 5% blend. I believe temperature makes a difference here too, so we might see a different result even with a lower ethanol concentration. While I'm waiting for that, and just for fun really, oh yes, it's really fun spending weekends testing petroleum distillates, I thought to see how Redex fuel system cleaner compares with petrol. If you want to skip past this, I do have timestamps on this video. For those not skipping, this isn't Redex Octane Booster, it's the one a lot of people swear by and I used to use it a lot back in the day, usually after the car had a service or felt a little down on power. As it's basically just made of heavy fuel oil aromatics, I'm not expecting it to contain any hydrophilic compounds, but you never know these days. I'd actually like to see if you could run a small bike engine or generator on pure Redex, but I'd need a few more channel memberships or some ad revenue before I'm going to that expense, so I'll have to make do with the usual for now. That usual being the 300 millilitres of water added to 700 millilitres of Redex. This stuff does appear to be somewhat more viscous than petrol, which I guess should be expected given it's a type of heavy fuel oil, but the red colouring does seem to aid us in seeing the visual separation. I know some people add food colouring to water when trying to separate ethanol from petrol, but that's only really that useful if the petrol itself is clear, most of ours is piss yellow. We'll give that a few minutes more and do the octane test while we wait. Look what this horrible damp weather's done to my octane tester's box. It's been stalled off the ground, yet still managed to soak up a puddle from somewhere. I wonder if this will just give its maximum reading like it does with ethanol. No, it's 99 Ron apparently. 
Remembering this is calibrated for petrol, measuring dielectric resistance, but assuming it's accurate, it's one step closer to seeing if you could potentially run an engine on pure Red X, as it shouldn't pre-detonate. As that's given the water a chance to separate, we can see that nothing has bonded to the water molecules, so at least there are no alcohols added to Red X. Let's just do another quick octane test on this sample that had water pass through it, then we'll see how the V power is doing. Ninety nine run again, so no change. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. The fumes coming from the Red X were making me feel a bit sick, so this is actually about 15 hours after the initial V power ethanol tests, and it's still looking a bit foggy. There is some condensation on the outside of the glass, but there's definitely still water suspended in the petrol. I'm going to do the octane test now just to see what difference the removal of the 2.5% ethanol makes, then I can leave the foggy petrol stored in the jar for however long it needs to clear. Ah, so that's handy being 95 RON, only 4 less than its initial specification. However, longer term viewers might remember our previous ethanol free V power measured 101 RON, so we could have lost up to 6 here. In any case, it's still handy if your compression and ignition timing is set for a 95 RON minimum, so you can at least remove the ethanol and not add anything to it to recover the lost octane. So, on the fifth day, as well as creatures of the sea and birds of the air, the residual water has finally separated completely from our petrol. And now for the final octane test of this video, has it dropped any more from 95 or can it still be used as is? Yep, well at least that's something. Thanks very much for watching.